here we will discuss about two small topics related to malaria that is black water fever and the cerebral malaria these are two uh, very small topics uh, related to malaria sometimes as in viva so uh, one should must know them as well coming to the first topic that is black water fever so black water fever is nothing but a complication of the falciparum malaria nothing but just a complication okay uh, why why do we give a uh, name of black water fever this is because in this condition black colored urine is produced and since there is fever as well due to malaria hence it is together called as a black water fever so this is characterized by a sudden severe intravascular hemolysis which is followed by a by the fever the urine see here we have written also that since the urine becomes dark in this condition due to hemoglobin urea due to hemolysis hence the condition is called as a black water fever so what is the pathogenesis the pathogenesis is that when a patient is previously infected with the is previously infected with the plasmodium falciparum and during that previous infection if the patient was treated with quinine and then he or she is infected now then what happens that in previous infection the antibodies which are produced against the quininized rbcs those antibodies remain in the blood so in the further infection in the subsequent infection now what happens that when the patient is treated again with the quinine then those antibodies combined with the uh, quinized rbcs and cause lysis of those rbcs leading to the massive hemolysis okay so this is all about the pathogenesis of the black water fever the clinical features that we see in the black water fever uh, are very simple like the, that is black urine will be there that is a very obvious thing then there will be fever and there will be jaundice due to the excessive hemolysis so fever will be there jaundice will be there and black urine will be there the, these these are the clinical features of the black water fever now coming to the lab diagnosis so the lab diagnosis is simply by the clinical history so basically the diagnosis is by uh, clinical history other than that we can do some other examination also so clinical history is uh, very important in such patients the history of malarial infection treated with quinine previously will must be there if the case is of black water fever now other than that uh, uh, other than the clinical history we can do the urine examination we were, where we will find the hemoglobin urea bilirubin urea and we can do the blood examination also where we will see decreased uh, hemoglobin and the rbcs and increased total bilirubin other than that we can use the rapid diagnostic test kits that we have discussed in the uh, malaria diagnosis uh, diagnosis part also so this is how we can this is how we can diagnose the case of black water fever we can diagnose it clinically but lab diagnosis can be done then treatment the treatment is the uh, same chloroquine uh, can be used for the treatment of this condition now coming to the our next topic that is cerebral malaria so cerebral malaria is uh, nothing but a serious complication of the plasmodium falciparum which is uh, in a layman term it is also called as brain malaria okay so the cerebral malaria brain malaria are same or in hindi it is called as mastisk bukhar so mastisk bukhar bhi wahi hai cerebral malaria ko hi mastisk bukhar bhi kehte hain so this is a complication of the falciparum malaria and uh, why does this happen must this bukhar or the cerebral malaria this is because the plasmodium falciparum uh, is such a parasite that uh, uh, when it enters in the rbcs then those parasitized rbcs get adhered to the capillaries of the deeper organs like in the capillaries of the brain in the capillaries of the liver and so on so as it uh, uh, get uh, sequestered or get uh, captured or get adhered to the capillaries in the deeper organs like in the brain hence it is called as brain malaria or cerebral malaria and that is a very uh, fatal and a very serious complication so what is pathogenesis see here the pathogenesis is same that is adhered to the uh, deeper capillaries 
so uh, the plasmodium falciparum expresses a protein which is called as pfemp1 that is plasmodium falciparum erythrocyte membrane protein 1 pfemp1 so by virtue of this protein what happens is that the parasitized rbcs get adhered to the endothelium of the blood vessels in the deeper organs such as brain and that leads to the occlusion of the blood vessels and hence the oxygenated blood cannot reach to the cerebral cortex that may lead to cerebral anoxia so that is the pathogenesis of the cerebral malaria okay that the rbcs parasitized rbcs are getting adhered to the capillaries of the deeper organs like brain that is causing occlusion of the blood vessel the blood oxygenated blood can uh, is not getting to is, is not reaching to the brain that is causing cerebral malaria as uh, um, sorry that is causing cerebral anoxia and thereby causing death of the patient so that is the pathogenesis of the cerebral malaria the clinical feature is that as the oxygen is not reaching so there may be seizure there may be reduced muscle tone due to decreased activity of the cerebral cortex there will be loss of the tendon reflexes like uh, uh, you know tendon reflexes that we have read in the physiology so those tendon reflexes will be lost knee jerk reflex like that okay so this is on these are all the symptoms of the cerebral anoxia and also the features of the cerebral malaria now coming to the lab diagnosis how will we diagnose the case of cerebral malaria so lab diagnosis is first we have to collect the peripheral blood smear so where we can detect the ring form echol forms are seen so other than that we can also detect the banana shaped gametocytes the banana shaped gametocytes are also sometimes helpful in the diagnosis of the plasmodium falciparum other than that the in the peripheral blood the ring form echol forms are also uh, helpful in the detection or the, uh, diagnosis of the especially the echol form echol form especially is very important for the diagnosis of the plasmodium falciparum in the blood and so this is uh, this is the very important uh, point in the lab diagnosis that we have to examine the peripheral blood and there if we detect the echol form that uh, confirms the diagnosis of the or if we get the banana shaped gametocyte that com confirms the diagnosis of the plasmodium falciparum then we have the quantitative buffy code examination again there the parasitized rbcs appear brilliant green and by that we can detect that there is a uh, plasmodium infection uh, then we have the rapid diagnostic test kits if the band is produced at hrp2 antigen that is test line one that means there is uh, that means there is uh, plasmodium falciparum infection is there the treatment is ACT, ACT, we treat it with the ACT that is artemisinin combination therapy that is given with the artemether, artemether, quinine. These drugs are used uh, in ACT combination therapy, I mean in artemisinin combination therapy. Okay, so that, that that is the treatment of the cerebral malaria. This is all about the diagnosis uh, of the cerebral malaria and this is all about the two topics.